It's a party! Luminar Nia is having its second anniversary. Hi, I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and in this video, we're going to celebrate that milestone by sharing and comparing some of our favorite tools. I'll show you my three favorites for both portrait and landscape, and you'll see why they're my go-tos. So if you're ready to compare notes and chat about Luminar Neo's two-year journey thus far, let's get started. Luminar Neo has had quite the journey in the last two years. It was released in February of 2022, and since then we've seen 40 updates, eight new extensions, several new tools, as well as three generative AI tools. So we've come a long way in two years. Here in this channel, we've produced over 100 videos about Luminar Neo for you. You can find them by checking out our playlists. I'll put links to the most popular videos and playlists in the description area below for you. I also created and produced an entire course on using Luminar Neo. So I've been using it since the very beginning and I do have some favorite tools. So as promised, let's take a look at those. I'm primarily a portrait and people photographer. So my favorite tools encompass things that work well on portraits. When you look at the top section in the tools panel, you might already have an idea of which are my favorites. I put Skin AI and Face AI together because I usually use them both. It's rare that I will use one and not the other. I love the Skin AI because it does everything I need as a portrait photographer with two sliders and a simple checkbox. What used to take a really long time to go through and smooth skin now can be done with a couple of simple sliders or incorporated into a preset. See what a great job it does here on the shine on the forehead of the girls? I use the face light slider a lot to brighten the face. It's like I've put a reflector on to bring more light into their eyes. I also use this pull down menu and change the iris color frequently. I'll usually find the same color that matches their original eye color because it fills it in with a bigger iris and more color. So I love what that does. The other sliders work really well as well. Dark circle removal, improve eyebrows, and lip darkening and teeth whitening when the teeth are showing. So I'm just going to make some basic adjustments here using brown eyes, and you can see what it's doing. So just by using those two simple tools, which I'm gonna count as one of my favorites because I always use them together, I can quickly go from this to this. And as I mentioned, you can save it as a preset or copy and paste your settings. So let's take a look at what happens when I do that or sync the settings across a few different images. To copy the settings, just use the keyboard shortcut, Command or Control C. If you'd like to have a free Luminar Neo keyboard shortcuts cheat sheet that you could download and print for your reference at home, I'll put a link to that in the description area below for you. You can also just right click on the image, choose adjustments and copy from here. Next, select the images that you want to paste the settings onto and then just do Command or Control V. Let's take a look at this one to see what it's done. Wow, look at this, before and after, and that was just two tools and a copy and paste. Can you see why these are among my favorites? Even when using the skin softening and smoothing on an older subject, it doesn't go too far. You'll notice here that it's softening and not removing. So it's just a gentler version of her. You can also go in and tweak the settings, of course. So I can make her eyes a little bit bigger so she's not squinting quite so much. Or if she has blue eyes, for example, we can change her eye color and now it matches her blouse. My second favorite tool for portraits is Glow and specifically the Orton Effect type of filter. I use this one on pretty much every portrait that I process. I usually drag it up to about 25 or 30 depending on the amount of softening I want to have. And then I find that this one needs to have the brightness lowered back down to the original level. 
To double check the brightness, I just toggle it on and off. You can also adjust the contrast level and warm it up or cool it down. In this case, I think the image is a little bit yellow, so I'm just going to dial the warmth down a bit. Can you see what a beautiful glow it gives this portrait? I love the Orton effect. I'm going to copy the settings once more and paste it onto this one this time. If we go into the Edits tab here, you can see that now the Orton effect has been applied as well. Look what a great job this is doing on her eyes. Especially when you're photographing somebody in a dark room, their pupils get really large, so you won't have a lot of color in their eyes. So when you use this little trick, you get a lot more iris showing and the eyes and the face really just come alive. On this portrait, I've already applied Face AI and changed the iris color. Can you see the difference? My intention with this one was to turn it into black and white, and I wanted the eyes to really pop. So maintaining the original eye color didn't matter. Let's take a look at the black and white. It's pretty good, but I'm going to add my third favorite tool for portraits, and that is Dramatic. You'll find that one down here in the creative section. When you're doing more of a character portrait like this, I love the dramatic tool because look at what it does. It makes the image really stand out. Let's do another copy and paste. It's a little more dramatic than I would like on this lady. So I might go in after the fact and just apply some skin smoothing. Can you see how I'm using these three tools in combination? So just to summarize, my favorite three portrait tools in Luminar Neo are Skin and Face AI, I'm calling that one, Glow for the Orton Effect, and Dramatic. If I could have a fourth choice, or let's call it a bonus one, I would choose the Mood tool. I love to apply lots to my images to create a signature style. To do that, you use the mood tool. I recommend dragging the amount slider up over 50, and then when you hover over the previews, it gives you a better idea of what it's actually going to look like. I love some of the ones that come with Luminar Neo in the creative pack. I think I'm gonna go with Bakersfield from the cinematic toning pack. This one comes with Luminar Neo as well. It's kind of giving me a faded out 70s kind of look, which fits for this image. Remember, copy and paste if you want to see it on another image. And there you go. If you haven't yet purchased Luminar Neo or you need to get an upgrade, now is the perfect time because they are having a special promotion for their second anniversary of Luminar Neo. If you want to get an additional 20% off, use my discount code in the description area below. The promotion runs until February 26, and current pricing is $11.95 US per month, or if you commit to the 12 months, it's only $79, or two years is $119. That works out to just slightly less than $5 a month, probably less than one Starbucks coffee. There is still a lifetime plan available, and that's $199. I do recommend the pro plan moving forward because then you will have any new tools and updates as well as new extensions that come out. So you will always have the current version. Next, let's move on to my favorite landscape tools. The first one that I love to use on landscapes is Color Harmony. You'll normally find it at the bottom in the professional tools, but I've added it to my favorites, so it's up top here. It's easier than scrolling all the way to the bottom. So if you want to add one to your favorites, just find the tool that you like, for example, Dramatic, just right click it and choose Add to Favorites. Now you'll find it in this top section. So Color Harmony, the one that I use a lot is this Color Contrast section. When you drag the amount slider up, you start to see what's happening. It's going to add contrast and brighten the color under the slider on the hue scale here. So currently it's on orange. So it is brightening orange and yellow and at the same time darkening the opposite color, which is blue. If I take this to the extreme, you can see what's happening. 
See how it's darkening the sky and brightening the building? In this case, that's a good thing because we want the building to stand out more and we want the sky to be more dramatic or dark. I'll often use these sliders down here under split color warmth as well. You can actually warm up or cool down the warm colors and the cool colors separately. For example, if I take this one to the right, it's going to make the yellows and oranges more orange or warmer. If we take it to the left, it's going to push them more towards green. So I like a little more orange in the building. The bottom slider will do the same with cool tones. So to the left, we'll make blues more blue. Look at that sky. Or we can literally turn the sky pink. I think I'll stick with blue. So take a look at what this one tool is doing. Wow, right? Now imagine using it in conjunction with the develop tool and all of the others. Let's take a look at the same tool on this landscape image. I've already done quite a bit of editing on this image to even out the tones in the sky and in the forest. But let's see what color harmony is going to do. Color contrast. Let's put it on green, yellow, and look at that. Can you see how it's really making the forest pop? But notice that it's also making that bridge really bright. Not a problem, of course, we can just mask it out. So I'm going to use the erase tool and just erase it from this part of the image. That looks good. Now we can shift the yellows to more of a blue tone or warm it up. And likewise with the sky. In this case, a little more purple in the sky kind of goes with the mountains. I do find that when you drag this tool up too far, the overall image becomes a little bit crunchy and oversaturated. So be careful not to go too far or take this brilliant slider down a little bit. It just lowers the intensity of the color slightly. If it still needs more adjusting, go to the color tool and use the saturation slider. My second favorite tool for editing landscape photos with Luminar Neo is not the Sky AI tool. I have in fact replaced the sky on this image. However, I don't use it all that much. But when I do, the one that I like to use as well is the sun rays tool. Let me show you why. I've got the sun matching up with the direction of light so it matches the shadows in the image, but I want it to be just a little bit more believable. So I'm going to make a sun put it over the actual sun right here and warm it up a little bit and then just adjust the settings. Now, let me show you where the magic happens with this tool, the overall look slider. When you take it to the left, it darkens the whole image and gives it this really moody look. Going to the right makes it lighter and airy. So let's see it before and after. I'll often add the sun rays into like a forest image or something hiding behind a tree and keep the sun rays minimal. But by using that overall look slider, I can totally change the style of the image. That's why I love this tool. It's a sneaky little one that's hidden in there. What do you think? Does it look believable? If we look at the photo before and after, you can really see the difference. So remember this overall look slider inside of Sunrays. It's a neat little hack to change the mood of your image. My last favorite tool for landscapes is in the creative section, and that is Mystical. Where I like to use the Orton effect inside the Glow tool for portraits, I find the softening with Mystical works a little better with landscapes. Once again, I usually go about 30, but there's no hard and fast rule. You get to decide how soft and glowy you want your image to look. See how it just softens everything a little bit? If I had to add one more tool into my favorites for landscapes, it would be Magic Light AI. That's one of the extensions. It works amazingly well on light sources to add a starburst. This is a great thing for night photos because if you want the lights in your scene 
to have a starburst, this is the easy way to do it. For example, there seems to be two here because it's picking up the reflection in the glass. So I'm just going to erase that one and then we can adjust the settings. There's a before and after. Watch what happens when you apply it on a night photo. See how it finds every light source? And you get to choose which ones you want to apply a starburst to. So Magic AI would be my fourth or bonus favorite for landscape and cityscape images, especially nighttime shots. So did any of your favorites match mine? Let me know in the comment area below which Luminar Neo tools are your favorites. Which ones do you use all the time? Please give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss any new videos. Check out Luminar Neo, the complete course as well if you want full Luminar Neo education from start to finish. You get my raw files to practice with and step-by-step -step instructions. To watch another video here on YouTube, click one on the screen now or check out one of our playlists in the description area below.